Okay. You see, we all just want to make sure the camera is on so that uh, it could be facing us. I see the one up top is red. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. Well, hello, everyone. Okay. Welcome. Our camera for seeing us. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Here we are. We're having our little glitches. We are here at WJZZ Cool Jazz TV, and we have two of the most amazing guests. But I'm going to first let Calibri do our little, uh, our little, little intro. intro. Our little, we're here at Getting Down and Dirty Talking Art. <laughs> but, yeah. Art stuff. That's what it's all about. <laughs> With Debbie LaPratt, Calibri the Artist, mm -hmm. we have our guest here, Mr. Ian Grant from Emoja Art Gallery, Fine Arts Gallery. I'm sorry, yes. and yes. Mr. Marcel Stewart. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Okay. Hello, yeah. hello. Tuning in on YouTube, Twitch, Periscope, and Twitter Live. And we all have our Ooh. Facebook Lives going, so hi to all our friends on Facebook. Hey, yes. everybody. Yes. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody. Hey. 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 I just want oh, to read wait. our quick little Yes, update. read our little thing. As we battle the COVID, I'm sorry I'm reading. As we battle the COVID-19 <laughs> pandemic, it's clear that misinformation can be just as deadly as the awful virus and spread just as quickly. Myths are spreading on the internet and social media, so it's important to know that facts keep our community healthy. The vaccines offered through Wayne County Public Health are significantly proven to be safe. It's important that each of us get vaccines scheduled as soon as you're able. Visit waynecounty.com slash COVID-19 to get the latest information. Thank you again. <laughs> All right. So now we're going to do our toast. We're going to everybody. We're going to toast. Are you all ready? Okay. Come on. We're going to to the arts, Australia, Australia. Would you mind kind of scooting up just a little bit? I want to make sure everyone can see you on camera one. <laughs> there we okay. go. There we go. You, you got to scoot in a little bit. real quick and show no. that jacket off. Of yeah. yeah. Come on, show us. He's got the cord. Come on, stand up. Stand up. Show us his jacket. Like a million look at bucks. Go over there a little bit. Yeah. Oh, look at that jacket. Like Isn't that just the coolest? Now turn around. Just came out. This is our new wardrobe that we're bringing in. We got a store. Motion has a store now. Look at that. Look at the back. Look at that. This is um Jack Johns. The first right. black champion, for those of you who don't know, in 1908. So we capture a lot of history also. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. You want to get in so we can see you. Yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> no, We're just, still trying to figure just out. Scooped up some. Okay. There you go. <laughs> All right. Jaws got clinched. <laughs> 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 just, 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 okay. All right. All right. So Mr. welcome, everybody. Welcome. We're so excited, welcome. you guys, to have you. This is like. We're just honored to have you guys. Yeah. 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 I'm honored yeah. to be here. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, so, all right. Your fine Arts Gallery. Yeah. Yes. Owner. Yes. Curator. All of that. Jazz. And retired. Uh, going to be well, retired going soon. Going to be retired. <laughs> AKA <laughs> the big dog. That's the what he tell us to call him. Exactly. The that's big what, that's dog. what he tells us to call him. <laughs> 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 no, I'm lying. I'm yeah. lying. But he does do a lot for the artists. I must say, as one of the artists of Emoja, he does do a lot as the curator and the CEO. He seeks out talent individually and it helps the gallery strive all in all okay. it's really cool because you're supporting the art you're, yeah. you're teaching people how to actually be able to sell your art and just just because that's the whole art world well it's to sell their own uh, art. So basically art. we started in 1996 and our goal then and it continues to be today is to celebrate the greatest artistic achievement of local and internationally acclaimed artists so I can tell you some things that we've learned over the past year and a half or so because our connections run pretty strong throughout the world. Mm -hmm. So we concentrated so much on the internationally acclaimed artists. Mm -hmm. And six months ago, it felt like we were in, at war. It felt like we were at war simply because we were in show period for about four or five months during the COVID time period. And um, Marcel was a part of that show. He was able to do a, an excellent job with that show. So that's very, very key and important. But the thing that we learned during that time period was that our local Detroit artists sold as much art as our internationally acclaimed artists that's that we usually on. have to have their um, <laughs> art brought in on big semi trucks wow. and loaded and packed and, you know, different things like that because they're coming in from maybe like Boston with a Paul Goodnight. Right. We're coming in from Maryland with like a Larry Poncho Brown and um, people of that nature. And our local artist that was in the show, Marcel Stewart, mm -hmm. sold very, very well. Rosemary Summer, of course. Yes. Um, Priscilla Pfeiffer and Priscilla know. Pfeiffer and on and on and on the local team. So we look to grow that team, 
We're looking forward to the new show that we have coming up, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Okay. What got you into doing, starting your gallery? Well, um, basically, um, I learned this business in Philadelphia, the East Coast. And Philadelphia was once the mecca of the art world. Mm -hmm. And um, I lived right up the street when I moved there because I was, again, with my corporate company. Mm -hmm. And uh, this gallery was just right up the street, and I got to know the gallery owner. And um, pretty much I've always been in marketing. I've been a marketing consultant. Mm -hmm. So he was an artist also. Mm -hmm. And so I just told him I could come in and help him from a marketing standpoint to market his business of how to get his business out there and how to get customers in the door to spend money. Because, you know, my goal is always monetizing. Right. How do we monetize the business? And I'm very, very proud to say, but a little unhappy because... My first show was the great Romar Bearden mm -hmm. of this world. And so, um, that's real. Yeah, that's wow. the <laughs> If any artist is out here that doesn't know Romare Bearden is, has some, has some truly incredible artwork as valued, pretty, pretty expensive. Yes. yes. But the reason why I say that is because everybody kept saying, well, you got the money, Z, and won't you buy some of this art? But I, I didn't really care for his artwork at that particular point. <laughs> <time. laughs> So that's so you the missed thing. Out. Okay. So I missed out, yeah. you know, because you know I could have bought pieces for five, ten thousand at that particular point in time. This is back in nineteen um, ninety six. Um, that would have been like a half a million now. Wow. So that's, that's why it's so important. <laughs> wow. wow. Yeah. How does that's, that work? <laughs> well, it's going to work just like it's <laughs> working with your art, right? Now, well, well let's talk about it. I mean, yeah. how, how, how does art go from a thousand to yeah, that's what, a half really a million? Point. Real quick, yeah. real quick. Uh -huh. we well, it well, well it, it, it depends. Um, you know, let me ask a more important question. What makes the difference between a $10 artist and a ten or $15,000 artist? And the key is marketing. So you'll continue to hear me talking about that all that's night because... You know, someone could be just as talented. Mm -hmm. Calibra, you're an artist. Mm -hmm. Deborah, you're an artist. Yeah. And um, you have to have the right backing. You have to have the right focus. And you got to have the right person with vision. Because you know what they say. Without vision, the people will fail, right? <laughs> oh. So, therefore, you have to be around visionaries. Okay. And that's very, very key in understanding of people who understand the business and how to take it to another level. This is very, very key. My Uncle Gary... Um, he was the first black color separator in the country. So well, what is what, that? What a color separator was at that particular point in time, we made a lot of prints, okay? So right. we were just into selling the originals. And he would take them and he would separate the colors into red, blue, green, yellow. And he would do the same thing for all the pieces. And then, you know, when he came into my home, he would... I would show him the different art, and I would be excited. I'm like, this piece costs 200 This piece right here is 1500 This piece is worth 5000 mm. And he was like, well, wait a minute. I did the same process to all of them. How, how is this one $1,000 and this one is $5,000? When I know I went through the process of putting this whole, you know, art structure together, mm -hmm. and now you have taken it and marketed it to this degree. So marketing is very, very key and important how you put the person in the marketplace, how you situate them, mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. what makes the price, just like any other um, industry. I come from the music industry, pretty much. Okay, okay. so uh, let me... Uh, go yeah. ahead. I just want to ask you a quick question, and So what it sounds like is it the the value of a particular piece of art could change just like the value of a U.S. dollar could change, or the value of anything, for that matter, a baseball card could change. It could increase in value. It could potentially go to an astronomical value based on how dedicated or really how well, instrumental. how you market it. And, and also more, how you market it. Yeah, we yeah. see what's happening with the Bitcoins now and mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. know, some of the NFTs mm -hmm. and, and things of that nature and the value of it and the selling of it. So, so the marketing of it is very, very important. I mean, today was a pretty happy day for us because we had some key appointments for the show coming up so within a half an hour we sold a few originals you know Good. so that's very very key at emotion fine arts our goal is not to say how many originals did you sell today our goal is to say how many originals did you sell within one hour 
Yeah. Whoa, so it's that's all about powerful. speed. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but just imagine the pressure, right? As yeah. an artist. Can you explain to <laughs> And he's <laughs> one of the <laughs> artists, so yes. Well, 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 <laughs> he goes, though. You do a wonderful job at that. Yeah. Can you yeah. just explain to somebody? To. Yeah, this, oh, I was just going to say, ahead. can you explain to somebody what an original and maybe a printist for those people who are, you know, not mm. knowledgeable of art? Yes. You know. Well, you an, an original <laughs> is like it's we would see here on the wall. Can we see this yeah, yeah. piece from Marcel right um, here? It's yeah. going to be flipping. Okay, well, he'll talk about it a little bit more. Okay. But uh, here original. It is. It's up. Okay, so original, like this particular piece here that Marcel kind of just designed yeah. and put okay. together okay. today for this show. An original is a one of a kind, okay? And um, basically, what we do from here, we what can make. That? several different kind of prints when I talked about my uncle being a color separator right. and learning that part of the business. So um, basically we can make maybe 100 or 200 prints from this. So this original will sell for X amount of dollars. Right. If we make 100 of these and we sell them for $500, mm -hmm. you know, that means we could generate an additional 50000 mm -hmm. off wow. of that line. Okay. So that's very, very key and important. So here was the interesting thing. My uncle took all his time to teach me about the colors, the color separation, so I could understand printing. Because we used to print on printing presses that would be a half a block mm -hmm. in the older days. And then I taught him about running a gallery. Mm -hmm. And I taught him about the art part of the business. And he eventually opened a gallery. That's so so cool. um when my wife and I, right after we got married, moved to New York, upstate New York, I published my first artist up there. And basically, this is how I got into the business overall. That was in 1990, with well, five years now before we have launched, before the launch of Emoja Fine Arts. So I saw his original. I thought it was very, very beautiful. Usually I buy the originals before I publish them. That's another secret to the business. <laughs> oh, okay. And after I missed on road my beard, I promised myself I would never miss again. <laughs> so usually I go in and I buy the original. So he was kind of like unhappy as an artist. And, you know, so I bought it. The first piece was called Endangered. It was a black and white piece. It was a little boy just right by a door. Mm -hmm. And he could go either way. With the right mentors, he could be mentored correctly and turn out right. But with the wrong mentors, we could we know what would happen. And then... That's when crack yeah. cocaine was starting to come in in the 1990s, and it was very prevalent and spreading across the country pretty fast. So mm -hmm. I like this piece, Endangered, and so I published that particular piece for him, and um, I financed it. I bought the original, mm -hmm. then I published it, and I financed it. Mm -hmm. And then I gave him all of the pieces. At that particular point in time, we published a 1,000 mm -hmm. of those um, prints. Mm -hmm. And came back to see him two or three weeks later and he still wasn't happy and smiling <laughs> i'm like dave what's going on now i just bought the original last week yeah. put money in your pocket then i published this yeah. for you and i gave them I to like you and yeah. um <laughs> yeah he just yeah, basically said you know what i can't sell these i haven't sold them and so that's when I had to put on my marketing cap. I said, okay, oh, all right, I'm going to okay. show you how to sell these. Cool. And, and I, I'm going to sell these for you, and I'm going to develop a program. Right, and I think right. that marketing goes a long, very long way. Because just like what you said, published, uh, it means something. It means that someone else has not only looked at your work, but someone else has also approved your work to mm -hmm. deem it as publishable. Mm -hmm. um, for instances, when I first started at Yamoja Fine Arts Gallery, Ian reviewed my portfolio and then reviewed the piece that I brought into him and said, okay, we'll publish this one. Um, looking at the collection that I provided, he said this one is the one as opposed to the others, and then we'll make a, a series out of this one. So those are particular skills that you got to own on as a, as a curator, and then as an artist, you got to challenge yourself on, um, um, go back in the studio and... Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. We're going to take a fast oh, one-second break. Okay. okay. Yeah, Hold that thought. remind our viewers that you are tuning in to Get Down to Dirty Talking Art with Debbie LaPrat and... Kaliwi the artist. We're here with Mr. Ian Grant, yes. owner and curator at Emoja Fine Arts Gallery in, in Southfield, and superstar artist Marcel Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> Tune in every single week on uh, Twitter, Periscope, YouTube, and of course and, Facebook. Yes. All right, so uh, we All were right. talking about, um, well, developing you as an artist, which we'll get mm -hmm. back to, but we were really getting into um, your, your marketing. I know that you discussed or coined really guerrilla marketing. For Emoja Fine Arts and how successful you've been. Mm -hmm. So, um, 
well, one of the reasons I was so excited to have you on today, an excited period just to pick your brain, you know, mm -hmm. because... Um, we want to learn. <laughs> you, well, because you've thrived, you yeah. know, and I kind of, I, I watch people move and you've thrived, especially through this pandemic. I've seen galleries close, right. businesses close. So mm -hmm. really we wanted to see just how was your year? How was that 2020? Because you came, I mean, you had a party, you just had a party. I want to know too. I want to know, know too, y'all. That's right. Well, tell us. Well, well, tell us. Well, what's the sauce? <laughs> well, here's the sauce, and we're going to talk about it a little bit, because when the pandemic started in March, as we know, mm -hmm. you know, the governor closed the state down for three months, pretty much. So from April through the end of June, our gallery was closed. Mm -hmm. So basically... You know, we felt that we were knocked down. We weren't knocked out, and we had to figure everything out. So I had to go into my Ali style of marketing. <laughs> what so Ali? what we did for three months is we did the rope a dope. <laughs> so while those punches was coming in and the money wasn't, <laughs> oh okay, I got it. While those punches was coming in and we couldn't hardly move, I just laid on the rope, you know, and kept taking them punches. <laughs> But when it came to like August and September, we started to strategically plan mm -hmm. with our team. And by this time, this is when we started figuring we could throw punches. Mm -hmm. and, and we talked to the Almighty. You know, we did put blood over our door and everything. And right. asked for the plague to pass by us. And then we went into this thing saying, being assured and being, felt like we were guaranteed that it was time to go to market. So then we went into a four or five month show at that particular um, um, point in time while most people weren't doing shows. Or right. If they were doing shows, they were doing virtual shows. Right. Right. And so we went and got some of the best artists in the world that we have relationships with mm -hmm. around the world. My first mentor um, was Annie Lee, the great Annie Lee, the great mm -hmm. late Annie Lee. And my existing mentor that's still alive right now is um, Paul Goodnight out of Boston. So okay. some great individuals in the marketplace. So. My first thing was I called Paul. I said, Paul, we need you. We need your work. We need you to have everything come in here from Boston. This is when we started having the big trucks come in. Um, we then called Poncho out of Maryland, another internationally acclaimed artist. And I had a relationship with these individuals from the early 90s because you got to understand we used to take the show on the road. Oh, okay. You know, the show wasn't just always just here. And I want to tell you something about the artists, too. They really change once you take them on the road. Because when they have somebody line up for them, like 100 to 150 people, 200 people, and you bring them back home and you try to tell them something. You know what I mean? Now <laughs> they know different. they're... It's <laughs> different. <laughs> now they know they're a star. It's right, like, right, it's like right. you're talking to me. <laughs> oh, God, is that the same guy or what? <laughs> so, um, but, it's, but it's interesting. We were able to call on a lot of old friends because in our circle was people like, you know, Charles Bibbs, um, like I said, Annie Lee, Carl Owens, um, on and on and on, all the superstars from around the country. And basically what helped make us in the industry was that we were backed by Annie Lee out of Chicago. Okay. She okay. gave Emoja Fine Arts, and I don't want to go through the story, but she gave Emoja Fine Arts exclusive distribution rights nice. based on how we went in there to sell her mm -hmm. and everything like this. And I mean, we were really, really selling and putting programs because she's like hold on hold on hold on hold on for one minute i'm like what's going on and she's like just sit there just sit there and so she went and got a daughter joy okay. and she was like joy she's like go ahead go ahead she's like joy you gotta get a hold of this <laughs> and um you know how we were telling her we're gonna come to market what we're gonna do across the united states and at the end i said well annie what are we gonna do now um i feel we can take your business and help take you to this level you're there already you're already a millionaire mm -hmm. But I think we only can still help you make it another million. <laughs> so um, basically, um, to be honest with you, Annie said, I'll let you know in one week. And in one week, she sent us a letter and gave Emoja Fine Arts exclusive distribution rights on her work throughout the United States. That is awesome. Yes. Oh, it, congratulations. Absolutely. So, you know, people can help make you. And so when that happened and we went to the shows, now all the strong artists from around the world, because Annie was one of the strongest and one of the biggest millionaires at that time, wondered like if Annie, and we were young too, we were pretty young, we were still in our 20s. Um, um, just, they just basically said that if Annie gave us, gave you her line, 
we're willing to work with you. So, you know, we assertively assess things, you know, how artists says they're intuition, intuitive mm-hmm. artists. Mm-hmm. We, we think we're intuitive entrepreneurs mm-hmm. because we I come like from the belly. Mm-hmm. And this is a term that we'll talk about a little later. Coming yes. from the belly, coming oh, from the smart. feeling <laughs> yep. of, um, you know, how you feel, how you twist and turn. Now, that's what our team the says instinct. to us. The instinct, and and our team talk to us about this all the time, saying we're constantly speeding, like we're on motorboats and speedboats, you know, um, with magnum engines, yeah. and um, <laughs> speeding to the challenge, speeding to the opportunities that we see, to um, again establish our business. Okay. Awesome. awesome. Hey, y'all. Wonderful to view. I mean, it really is just it's hearing your it's, stories. It's, yeah, wow. yeah. Just you gotta do and I. I I, I didn't know you came from music, but you moved like you're in the music industry. Yeah, let me tell you the interesting thing about that. Um, the music industry, we understood real well because we used to give like Prince, Time, Vanity, you know, all all the all the big artists. And um, so to me, some artists don't like when I say this, so because I dealt with poets and, and different things like that. So to me, an artist is like a fruit in a basket. And when I, like I say that... that uh, let me explain it to you carefully. Please. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Some are apples, some okay. are oranges, okay. and some are bananas. So let's say a musician that actually sings would might be an apple to me, mm-hmm. the way I market them. Let's say a musician, excuse me, let's say an artist that actually phys- physically draw mm-hmm. a painting or paint, you know, they might be an orange. Mm-hmm. Let's say a poet that we want to work with they might be a banana. So mm. to me, they're all artistic with artistic given mm. talents by the Lord. Mm-hmm. But they need people to help cone in on what direction they're going in. And, and that's where we come in. And that's why I look at them all the same. Because we think that this industry is probably about 40 years behind the music industries and other industries like that. And we're on our way. And we're on our way up. And so it was important to me to get into an area where we could work from the ground floor level Mm -hmm. and build up, then we'll have stronger structure. Okay. Okay. It's not like like you're doing with like with myself. Absolutely. I was going to ask, can I make this joke? And please don't take it seriously because he's Uh. not Suge Knight. I got a a (laughs) big sense of humor. I'll make this joke about being the Suge Knight of art just because of how Death Row took over. No, he is. Master P Puff Daddy, like just how the music industry comes in. Like, nah, you know, it just does it. But even how you develop and help establish and kind of, well, kind of sign artists, for lack of a better word, and help to develop them and push them. You know, like, right. oh, I forget what you were selling. How many can you sell in one hour? You know, yeah. Diddy style. <laughs> right. You know, and then and it, it, yeah. everything. Coming into having uh, a Marcel Stewart, who I've been a fan of your work just oh, God, on the breakfast club. Yeah. You you know, yeah. You. I would see you coming with your suit on, your gray suit. My mom, sorry, yeah. we're in Detroit. But my mom be like, oh, here come Pee Wee Herman. You know, but you were explaining the work. You were polished. Yeah. You know, just yeah, already. very polished. In my mind, just already there. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. and then seeing your growth with, if your mom just since you've been yeah. in the oh, you. Like, literally, you got weight on you, just uh-huh. everything. Yeah, I mean, you know? sometimes that's what it takes, How you does know? that come? I mean, it, it takes, like I told Ian over and over, uh, the eyesight of somebody looking at something raw. Right. You know what I mean? Uh, whether it be a raw steak or a raw talent, you looking at it and saying, how can I make this beautiful? How can I make this um, into what I see it as currently? Mm-hmm. And that, that's mm-hmm. what he did. You know, he, he seen the talent that I had underneath the, the rags, the covers and everything else. You know, some people may see me with a suit <laughs> on and everything else or, or just with simple artwork, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, but he's seen the depth of the artwork. He's seen the textures that lie beneath. I He's seen the, this piece before it was made. That's you, it, yeah. you know, yeah, so it's, so it, 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 it's, it, it's, nice a, it's a big yeah. shout out to him for being able to see down at the end of the tunnel before, you know, sometimes even I was able to. So okay. I, I, I think that big half of everything goes to Yamoja. And I, I know Yamoja stands for unity, but what he spoke on, on everybody being a fruit in the basket, mm-hmm. that really speaks on a unity because I see it each and every day at Yamoja. Um, it's not only artists there. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a full team, and uh, everybody within the team helps each other become great. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't be at the level that I am today without Yamoja's team. Not mm-hmm. only Ian, but, you know, everybody in the background, yeah. Um, yeah. everyone. Yeah. 
the stuff that we don't see every day That's it allows cool. it, it allows me to paint it allows right. me to uh own in on my craft and mm-hmm. what i like to do better uh things i want to improve on and uh things like that but boy I tell you, I'm gonna tell the camera too. When I started <laughs> off, man, it was it was one style, and I was sticking to it. And Ian brought me in and said, "Look, man, we're gonna have to snatch you away from that style and and switch it up for a minute and see where it goes." And once we did that, it's like, uh, wow. yeah, I, I think things kind of uh, took a took yeah. off on a rocket for me. We kind of handcuffed him for five months. He was no longer <laughs> able to paint soup splash. That's what I was about to add. And um, <laughs> that's what his trademark is mm-hmm. yeah but now that he's ranged himself you know we feel he, he should go back and, and, and continue to coin this style and continue to own that style because now we know he's ranged out and mm-hmm. maybe um we decided that we're going to do a musical series for him in the fall Ooh, um and it was for the, the jazz festival here mm-hmm. so the first one he did was of some soup splash in there mm-hmm. And after that, I just said, that's it, Marcel. If you're going to be on this team, we can't have you drawing in this format. You know? not, to, not to interrupt you, but I think that those are some of the challenges that come with your mojo. So just like how he has stated, it's, you know, how, how quick can you sell the piece? And then also along with that, how cha- how how far can you challenge yourself? Yeah, how can you push yourself? Yeah, how, how can level? you push yourself? And, and what are you bringing to the table? Right. And, it, it's it's more than being an artist. It's being able to challenge your own personality and, and yourself as an individual. Yep. Yeah. Go ahead. No, just just showing her we got three minutes before right. we take well, our break. Yes. I was gonna say, how do you has well? How are you able to hone into that? Because I know that we discussed uh, mm. creating from the belly. Yeah. Right. right. So is that hard? How do you dive in? Cause well. You're, about so she to said, switch over and see the piece behind you and mm-hmm. you know the, the swoop slash has this signature yeah. still there as you you know as you guys are about to see but i'm looking at textures and oh, just you know yeah mm-hmm. the textures mm-hmm. how everything. do you how did i well how the yeah process, yeah so you know? it, it is a difficult process yeah. but like how ian said it's bringing those big trucks in it's bringing those people in that's uh, have paintings that retail for twenty thousand dollars that say no discounts mm-hmm. is mm-hmm. bringing the the heavyweights in there and and knowing that you're a lightweight and that the curator will say okay it's a pandemic we can't afford to keep you around it, it's it's those things that make you think about okay is this what I want to do mm-hmm. is, is this something that I want to continue to move forward in and if it is then I need to really build a relationship with this guy. Yeah. And that's what happened, you know. We we <laughs> built like a strong won. relationship, <laughs> right? We built a strong relationship, and uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. Now, would right. you mind while we have the camera on your piece? Could you mm-hmm. mind just kind of explaining just a little bit about it yeah. for the viewers, so we can see even just the growth. And for the viewers um, okay. on the site, you'll be able to see before and after pictures and just right. more of behind of the scenes work here. Of course. So this piece here is titled "Naturally Royal." Okay. Um, the theme behind this piece was constant, constant, constant movement um, and motion and emotion. Um, the word natural stems from the colors green. Uh, the colors green represent nature, prosperity, growth overall. Mm-hmm. Um, along with that, I uh, decided to add in different variations of colors of purple. This may be considered a color purple. This is considered a purple. The light violet purple, the lavenders in the piece, they all represent royalty, Mm -hmm. uh, being noble, coming of honor. So all of that combined with the textures, the depth, and the movement within the piece, Mm -hmm. I think it shows me as an artist and as an individual um, moving towards that royalty, towards that nobility. It feels that way. Feels a lot more than the swoop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I, I think I think that's the whole goal, and I think now, uh, as I move forward in my career, that swoop splash is more of an exaggeration point mm-hmm. to kind of hit people in the face and say, "Wow, mm-hmm. what is that all about?" Mm-hmm. And it's all about positivity. It's all about bringing that positivity back to my community, showing everyone, children from adults, that they can do whatever it is in their minds that that, that they are able. 
Right. That's good. That's cool. Mm -hmm. We're going to take Real a one-second break. Yeah. Okay. We are here. Yes. We're here at WJZZ. Okay. So when you come back, if yeah. possible, I would like you to go back into this belly yard. Tell me a little bit about this and how did you experience this with Marcel? Mm -hmm. Okay. Because I'm going to bring something up and I want him to tell okay. his story, okay. All right. which okay. is really, really interesting. Okay. All right. yeah, we're like getting that. here. We're here at WJZZ Cool Jazz TV yeah. at Getting Down Dirty Talking <laughs> Art with Debbie LaPrat and Calibri the Artist. And Ian and Marcel. That's so right. we're back <laughs> and talk. <laughs> so we're going to start getting into um, um, touching base with Marcel and his growth um, during his time at, mm -hmm. um, at Jumoja and tapping into creating from the belly and the belly art. Yeah, so we, we want to know about the, more about the belly art. Well, let me say this first of all. Um, Marcel has only been with the Moja Fine Arts in six months. Mm -hmm. So in six months, he was really, really able to grasp our concepts and what we looked at. And we talked to him about belly art. At first, I, I know he just probably kept saying, what is this belly art thing? But he had a little <laughs> challenge in his life. And I'm going to let him tell you about that challenge. And I'm going to tell you when we called for him to go deep into the belly. And what he produced. Mm -hmm. So, myself. so when uh, Ian was talking about that belly art, I looked at Paul Goodnight's pieces and I said, "No, that's not belly art. He's just good artist." And he said, "Okay, look at Rosemary's art." I looked at Rosemary's art and I said, "Okay, that's belly art. She knows what she's doing." <laughs> 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 uh, so, so then I looked at my art and I said, "Okay, this is just me playing around, maybe, because Ian's saying it's not good enough." Um, so then I actually encountered a situation downtown Detroit where it was oh, yeah, a um, told us about, yeah. racial profile situation and I was um, detained for over nine hours. It was a real uh, crucial situation um, that actually took me through some things and opened up my eyes to some things as well. But within that situation, I talked to Ian and he was able to let me know, this is your time. This is your time to really dig into the belly and do what I've been telling you to do. Right, because he called me up and I said, well, he told me about the situation that happened downtown. He was in the paddy wagon, locked up, handcuffed for nine hours. And um, I said, what do you want me to do about this, Marcel? You want me to get you a lawyer? You want me to get you an attorney so we can clear this up? He says, no, not, not at all. I just want you to know about this. But this is the greatest thing. I said, now it's time. The time has come. I want you to go in the belly and I want you to let us know on canvas how it felt, mm -hmm. how you Whoa. felt they treated you, mm -hmm. how they, f how you felt oh, that gave me the, the woman <laughs> that you were trying to protect because she couldn't speak English and you knew a little Spanish and everything wow. like that that yeah. you were trying that to protect crazy. from the officers and they locked you up and did all this to you for no reason. This is the time for you now to dig down deep. We don't want that surface art. We don't want that outside art. Mm -hmm. We want you to come now from the inside out. And I can Whoa. say he created a masterpiece. Yeah. After this. Powerful. <laughs> I don't want to cut you, cut you off, but just to interject, I remember, yes. I remember when you brought, um, well, told that story. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and even showed the artwork, you know, that went along with that. And that's one of my favorite. I mean, I think it's so. I appreciate <laughs> you know, it. I was I like, man. It. Yeah. But that was like the time where I really, you know, yeah. really started. Um, I don't want to say respecting you as an artist, I really did, but that was when I really like no, from no. the belly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, like, yeah. I, 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 I really, Marcel, like, I really you know, respect like. that because it was so much that went into that piece. Um, like yeah. all the way from, if some people had seen it, it, it had a black hole in it that represented just the time of despair, mm -hmm. and also had uh, white squares that represented like cages that you know just was memories out of my subconscious and I think that's what the term comes from really bringing it from the belly bringing all of your thoughts bringing all of your past and laying it on a two dimensional surface and putting it out there for everybody to see people don't see mm -hmm. what they see until you tell them or until that's you right. articulate it and that's right. right now people may only see me as a black male but when they see this they see my whole past yes. they see everything I've been through they see where I'm going they see right. Marcel right, mm -hmm. right. Should we have him talk about his piece? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, we can talk to me. Would you care to share a little more? As I think we. I mean, the only thing I wanted about, to say yeah. about yes. the belly was once he created that, now I said, now you know how it feels. So 
it was four in the series, Marcel. You're on your mm-hmm. second one. Mm-hmm. So we need your other two belly art pieces right away. Mm-hmm. So I well, want to make sure he stayed in the belly because right. we could not let him go back to the soup splash. Right, right, so right. I got then it. from there, he has control now of when he goes into the belly, what level he goes into the belly, how deep he goes into the belly. Whoa. And we'll just like to yeah. say, like Rosemary <laughs> Summers, you could see her art also. You know, she's a belly artist and with, with, with a range of just totally different styles. She could hit you with like six, seven, eight styles. Now, Rosemary's only been with us a year and a half. Mm. So keep that in mind. And everybody that's been with our company and now even Priscilla Pfeiffer, um, excellent abstract mm-hmm. um, artist. Price range has jumped and the quality there, there are three to five hundred percent in less yes. than a year. Yes, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Agreed. Yes. Um, yeah. Viewers, uh, that means go ahead and, and get them. Yeah. And now if it seems like it's too high, it's going to be up and astronomically high. So get it. <laughs> and Moja has payment That's plans right. too. This is right. live That's for the viewers. That's right. Yeah. That's get right. It. Get it. So to all my uh, millennials that may be saying, hey, I can't afford art or anything like that. The price does happen to rise because, as we mentioned at the beginning of the show, art has a value. And as the artist begins to work more and more and be more and more diligent on those originals and begins to work with someone that's actually in the marketplace, they begin to learn the value of their own craft and their own talents. So it is best to get that good piece that you've been waiting for and been looking for while you still can. That's Easy right. payment plans are available. That's right. And I will be at Yamoja Fine Arts this Friday for the Art in Full Bloom show. Yes. That's right. April twenty third. Yes. 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 Nice pivot. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. So speaking of that, all right. We talked about coming out of a four month show, mm-hmm. coming back into the spring. We, we're we're uh, anticipating Friday. Would you tell us a bit more about the Art in Full Bloom? Yeah, before I get into Art in Full, full Bloom, I just want to say two more things, how we were able to pivot, and we talked about intuitive and, and feeling it from the belly because we not only ask the artists to go into the belly, we go into the belly as far as how we market also. Yeah. So if yeah. you can recall, you were at one of those events, both of you guys. Mm-hmm. Um, but the first thing that we did was we honored our premier art collectors, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that was Sharon and James. Um, Mm -hmm. James, again, for buying the most original, doing the original Art Show 1, and Sharon for supporting us for over three years consistently. So we were able to award them with some nice awards, things being signed by the artists, Mm -hmm. you know, wine bottles being signed and designed, things that would really, really help them to go in their collection. And then we came back that next Monday. Mm -hmm. That was Friday in January. Um, And then that Monday by the 15th or 16th, the 20th was Martin Luther King Day. Then we gave another event again right after that. Mm -hmm. So um, that was a great event. As you know, your Mm -hmm. kids were there. We had the kids there with the artists. They were teaching them how to draw. They were coloring. It was so cool. We got some Marcel Stewart. It was lovely. (laughs) Yes. And in in addition to that, we really, really concentrated on what was called the social injustice because a lot of the work that was produced during that time period was because of all the injustice going on around the country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we had at least in our gallery 10 to 12 you know, paintings that represented the sign of the times. Mm-hmm. And I want to talk about the sign of the times because it's very, very important that the artist captures this moment. Mm-hmm. Because right. when they come back thousands and thousands of years yeah, from now yeah. and they look at the archives and they look at the records, mm-hmm. they don't necessarily go to the books. They're going to want to see the paintings. Yeah. Yeah. They're going to want to see what was happening in <clears> life <throat> at that particular point in time, just like they went into the caves That's to right. see what was drawn on the cave walls. Yeah. So right. we understand that from an archival standpoint that we have to capture and have the art so when they come back thousands and thousands of years from now, and we might be putting things in time capsules. We'll That's be talking right. about that at another day. <laughs> but, uh, so that they will have this to represent us, who we are, mm-hmm. and whose we are as a people. And that's very, very important, and that's very, very key. So we did um, shows within a show. Mm-hmm. So we continued to launch and move like that at that direction. Then we took a two-week rest. We thought we were going to rest for a while. And then, again, 
you know, that barely started stirring up. <laughs> and um, <laughs> so now we're into what's called the Art in Full Bloom show. Okay. And then we came with a totally different concept because we were hearing about the shots starting to come out in February. And, you know, he wanted to have by May or June everybody with one or two shots and people were going to be able to move around a little better. We felt we were going to go with the art in full bloom because we felt that we were blooming. We were just coming out of a real, real depressive time period. Mm -hmm. And we we felt by this time people would be pretty happy and, mm -hmm. you know, want to be able to get out, but still being careful with masks and social distancing and things of that nature. And we just watched the artists, and they were just so excited, and, and we just felt that the artists were blooming also. Yeah, that's, that's what so I was cool going to say. The artists are blooming. It, it, it's more than the arts. What I see in the gallery, I come in and I see um, art, like colorful personalities not necessarily the artwork but the colorful personalities you go into that gallery you'll see it once you arrive if you if you have rsvp please do yes. uh once you do arrive you'll see the personalities on the wall you won't Can't see work. the art you'll see the personalities and you'll want to grab that you'll want to put that in your home um or office space uh however you have it it's very expressive very cool and i can tell you the show hasn't even opened up yet and we and still sold. have private appointments well we can I'll say some examples we, we, on the get down and dirty talk talk <laughs> well, after the show I'm, I'm go ahead and put say, your money down because it's sold it's sold well i'm happy to say we're the people's choice we feel and we're honored to say that at this particular time, before the doors even open, we've sold a minimum of, of, of 13 paintings, mm -hmm. oh, you know, at this particular point from well, all the different 30 artists. minutes before the show. He came in, like I said, with, on the phone, got yes, money on the phone. Yes, <laughs> yes, it's, it's so, but it's such beautiful work, amazing work, amazing artists. Absolutely. Um, can't wait for to all the exhibits, but I guess coming out of, yeah. you know, this winter, it's so appropriate, you know, even with the title, Art and Full Bloom, full bloom because the art that you are hitting us with is like, oh, my God, it's yeah. beautiful. And <laughs> it's I think beautiful. that's kind of what you have to uh, give some credit to, too, because you noticed it, but uh, some others don't. They say, they go directly to the artist, hey, this is good art, but... You know, who picked that art to be on a wall? You know, mm -hmm. somebody had somebody to realizes. collaborate all of that art and put it all, all, yeah. all on one wall. And, and for you to actually mention that, I, I think that's good. Some artists that's, and yeah. some other people, they really don't ever really notice that. Yeah, oh, well, yeah. that's a key it's in being a curator, a curator mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. instead mm -hmm. of just saying the name curator. Are you really curating? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And um, you the show what a must... curator is? Well, a curator, first of all, and the word gallerist goes together. So okay. if you're a gallerist, technically you're a curator. Okay. But a curator is a person who basically flows and put a show together mm -hmm. and how the show should... Um, flow mm -hmm. and it should have some kind of systematic rhythm to it it should also have color patterns mm. which is very very important so things aren't clashing up on each other That's that it pulls one into the other so therefore one piece that you buy and like is pulling you into the other into piece. the other one so it all so therefore if you don't even get it that day the next morning you say hey i got a deposit i'm ready to go <laughs> oh, <laughs> right, because, right, um, right. the way we situated it's shoes. like you, you went to sleep on it you woke yeah. up you that's like, right. I gotta have that. That's right. Yeah. There you go. I like yeah. that. So that's yeah. all part of curating and being a successful curator. And um, you know, as I told you, we don't talk about selling in days. We talk about selling in hours. God, that is so cool. And they sell. They sell. It's sold. It's sold. <laughs> it's sold. <laughs> it's sold. <laughs> uh, Real quick, just reminding our view viewers that you're um, with us live on Get Down and Dirty Talking Art with Debbie LaPrant. Believe the artist Ian Grant, Marcel Stewart. Hey. <laughs> Watch us on YouTube, Twitch, Periscope, and uh, Facebook. Of yes, course. right. Um, talking about the, the upcoming ex exhibition, um, open on Friday. But I know you have some some early some preliminaries, yeah. right? Yeah, <laughs> 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 some priors <laughs> about um, who's part of it. Just tell us everything. Well, basically, our preliminaries are our private collectors. Okay. okay, at this particular point in time, we have certain individuals that maybe not want to come out in the crowd. Mm. Right. And that's always been the case, you know, not just because of COVID, just because they're premier individuals in the community. Right. Mm -hmm. And they want the gallery to open up with them 
for them by themselves where they could maybe sip some champagne, eat some shrimp. How does one become? Have some cheese and um, it's all yeah, based on dollar. Shrimp. They That's really right. do have a nice spread. <laughs> yes, but, they uh, do. It's based on monetization, monetizing, and mm-hmm. a lot of what we do is based on monetizing. And I, I want to say this because a lot of people I see get confused. I see them put things on Facebook, Instagram, and the whole bit, and they try to count the amount of likes. Likes mean nothing if you're not monetizing or monetizing Mm -hmm. because I've seen companies that went to marketing companies who might have a million likes, Mm -hmm. but they're not monetizing. So they come to the marketing companies to say, I got all these likes and people are following me, but nobody's buying my products Mm -hmm. because they haven't still situated to monetize. So our whole thing is we don't care about likes, you know. Don't get caught up in that. Get caught up into monetizing your business. Mm -hmm. And how do you do that? You you do that by getting the right people on your team. I'm a marketing consultant myself, and I could tell you the first thing that I did was after I got all the artists situated, I went out and we got another marketing professional to be on our team. Her name is Carrie. She's wonderful with her ideas, her concepts, and just the way that she goes about her business. Um, it's very, very key that you're not one-dimensional because it's just like right now I'm with Marcel. He gives me time to think while he's talking. Mm-hmm. So while I'm launching strategies or this or that way, it gives her time to come in with her impactful way of, of, of going to market that might be different for me. Because I, I, I market on the different strategy mm-hmm. that my sons then laugh at me about. But this is called guerrilla marketing. Mm-hmm. You okay. said something about that and, earlier. Um, yeah. Right now, I call both of my sons and I say, "Listen, the gorilla is loose." Oh, hold on. It's time to go eight. <laughs> and he is really beating on his chest right now, and we like to see that. But we're launching um, from a marketing concept, just you know, one after the other. And when you market from a gorilla marketing standpoint, you launch from what you call a ground level. Mm-hmm. That might be with your invites where people are out there giving them out mm-hmm. at different events. You have to launch also from a standpoint of um, the air marketing campaign. Today, this would be an air marketing campaign mm-hmm. because I'm in here with you guys. This is going over the air. Mm-hmm. It's going over the radio. Mm-hmm. Friday, we got Fox 2 coming in. That's another air marketing campaign. Okay. So it's about five or six different levels. Now, if we tell you too much, then we got to monetize. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Speak on it. Speak on it. <laughs> <laughs> so it's about five levels that we left in between there. But my son and I was talking about this earlier, and... Um, you know, I have to call him back just to give him the correct answer because he asked me a question. Well, do you think by being on here and TV2 coming in, um, is this going to give you the numbers that you're looking at? Is, is people, are people coming in and saying, well, I saw it on TV? No, it doesn't work like that. What you got to understand is people got to hear things eight times mm-hmm. before they even yes. hear it one time. Yes. yes. So when we launch 16 times, we know that they have only heard it two. Mm-hmm. And it might take till the third time before they can even um, conceptualize, you know, what right. we're saying. Right, right, right. Okay. Right, so. Can we get real fast, can Marcel, can you talk about your piece, and then you could go into your, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. These, mm-hmm. you know. Okay. So, uh, like I said, this painting titled Naturally Royal is 24, or I'm sorry, not 24, but 36 inches, 3 feet by 48 inches, 4 feet. So 3 feet by 4 feet. Um, it'll be able to view the original will be able to view at Yemoja Fine Arts on uh, February or I'm sorry Friday April 23rd between the hours of 5 to 9 on Friday you gotta be there I'm up there every day I'm I'm up there every day I'm trying to tell y'all what time to come up there (laughs) get there he'll be there you can get there there. right right. Um, (laughs) <laughs> we'll talk about the Art and Full Bloom show real quick, yes, but yes. Um, before we do that, Marcel, for us, is an artist in residence. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. You know, Rosemary is a family artist. Um, Priscilla Pfeiffer is part of our family. So we don't believe because we go into a month and a half show that we leave them behind and then come mm-hmm. back in a month and a half to mm-hmm. pick them up. So we have situations set up so that they 
can still be sold also at that particular point in time. So right. that's very, very key and important. So Marcel will be there. He will be set up in a special studio. Mm -hmm. We have about three different locations in the building well, where he'll cool. be able to work with you, but won't interfere within this show. It'll be 100% mm -hmm. of the art and full bloom. We're very, very honored to have Shirley Woodson, the 2021 mm -hmm. eminent yes. Kresge Award winner, yes. iconic figure. Yes. Okay, we also honored to have Marcel Stewart, world renowned artist, <laughs> Grammy Award Mark winner. Glenn. Marcus, Glenn. Yes. Marcus Glenn, yes. I want to put you up there already. Yeah, now. we got him up there. Okay. Right. Okay. 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 I'm okay. still I'm okay. still the young one. Yeah, he's still gotta take a few more steps. So <laughs> I'm, still I'm sorry one. about that. So super, Marcus super Glenn. Star, Marcus Glenn. <laughs> yeah, Marcus Glenn, world renowned, yes. but Grammy Award winner. Then we got Darren Darby. Oh, is Darren knocking it out the park right now? Wow, what an incredible artist. Huh? Darren he's Darby, yeah. Lay Puzzle style. And he'll tell you a little bit about Lay Puzzle. Well, on that Thursday at 7, and the week after, I think it's the 27th, we're having an educational session. Mm -hmm. So it's very important that we educate the people. Like uh, Marcus uses what's called a flat life, mm -hmm. which will go into three dimension. Then we got the infamous Ty Rawls coming in from California. He's here now. And it's just an honor to... Um, you know, again, this is one of Ty's products yeah, right here. Yeah, so, I um, love that. It is. This is a Jack Johnson. We got sneakers well, now with certain images. Wait. Yeah. And the Emoja store will be opening up very soon in about one week. We're only going to take certain images, mm -hmm. you know, to that platform. And then, of course, we, you know, we called her at the last minute because we had a void and we had to fill that void. And again, she's an incredible artist. She's a, um, let's say she's an abstract realism. Um, her name is Robbie Best. And she just really, really has some incredible artists. Can't wait. Most of these artists comes come, excuse me, from the Breakfast Club right. and also the NCA. So I, I just want to thank the Breakfast Club for all they have done for Emoja Fine Arts and, you know, all, all the people that we worked with with through that particular channel it's it, it's just been an honor but everyone that i have mentioned whether they're on a world-class status level are all from detroit mm -hmm. so that's very very key because we learned yes, in the that's last what we show wanted. yes we learned in the last show that i don't always have to go get them international no you don't because we got our international no, people right, right in right our here backyard, in your backyard. That's so what all five artists are from this marketplace that and they're so doing right. incredible yes all right. Yeah, yeah, you got about three I just minutes. Want to touch real quick on the apparel because it's sweet, and I love the fact that you um, that you're okay with going into prints and apparel yes. because mm -hmm. a lot of places are not. Yes. You know, gallery yes. owners and just different things like mm -hmm. that. So you have Tyrells on. Marcel yes. Stewart also has work. On yes, he does. Yeah, I'm yeah. Saying, yes, he does. Let's check out. You know, go to MarcelStewart.com and also yeah. go to EmojaFineArts.com in order to hmm. purchase apparel. Right. Yeah. Uh, so can you give the address? To Emoja, please. Yes, the address to Emoja Fine Arts for this show. You have to oh. RSVP to get yes. in. Okay. It's no pss, in. Those days are over. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So the address is, it's in the Crossroad Building in Southfield, and that's Emoja Fine Arts, one six two five zero Northland Drive, Suite one zero two, Southfield, Michigan four eight zero seven five. We are almost at capacity. Um, so please RSVP right. at the art show in full bloom or EmojaFineArts.com to see the, these incredible artists and their artwork. Mm -hmm. and, and okay. it, it's great art. You don't want to miss it. I'll be coming in as a viewer. Come and see me. I'll be able to show you some originals of mine if you happen to want to look. Um, we're looking... At a full house. That's all I can say. That is going to be yeah. so exciting. We're in full, we're in full bloom. I love it. We're in full bloom. <laughs> I love it. Ah. I like that. I like that. Great yes, job. Yes, that I'm is definitely, definitely, definitely excited. Life. Definitely. Uh -huh. Calibri, we want to thank you yeah, we and thank Debbie you too, because Debbie. you guys have been there with us through this whole COVID yeah. pandemic because situation. And yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, we've is. done interviews with you guys before you even started this show. You told us about the whole concept of the smooth jazz and the cool TV and everything. So we're just so honored to be here we're and to so follow up to with you. We're just so honored to have you guys. <laughs> uh, you know, follow up with you. And um, 
you know, and you're exactly right. June 30th, I will be leaving my corporate job that I've been with for 38 years wow. to come into the um, art business 100%. Right now, we've been running the business at 10 to 15%. I can't we're gonna gear wait up to, to see where you guys go. In the next year, yeah. We're, we're, we're looking at short film bio right now because it's very important that we capture our more historical artists mm -hmm. and have different... Um, famine on them and, and just a whole bit we don't want to give it all away but right. in the next year yes we're going to be gearing up pretty all quickly right. and we're going to be looking for members of the team all right. okay. let the gorilla loose that's good right. 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 caged up ever <laughs> all right everybody thank you for tuning in oh my god it's thank you so, so much uh -huh. with debbie lapret and Khalid the artist, artist and our so two much. amazing yes, yes, guests yes, oh my god it's been amazing thank you Marcel Seward, thank you. Yeah, Tune right. in, thank come you. in, come reserve. RSVP yes. on Friday. Watch RSVP. Must watch RSVP. Us. Please. All right, my date playing game, so I might have a plus one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> she, she just exposed him. <laughs> I'm going to have to go All in right, and RSVP. Please tune in. Come. Your mojo